What's up, YouTube? Ryan back today. Minor League Recap Week 3. I know it's a little delayed. Just got back from my honeymoon. Let's do the damn thing. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. That is exactly what we're going to do today. I know we're into week four now. We're almost, we're halfway through week four, but we're going to give you a, a week three recap because I want to be consistent. I want to make sure I'm giving you guys the weekly recap. So this recap for the minor leagues is from week three, which is from the 16th to the 22nd of May. Again, as always, these videos are going to be focused mostly on top prospects. Again, I know everyone loves the 28 year old who's been in the minors for 10 years, but you know, for my video purposes and what I do with sports cards, pretty much predominantly revolves around top prospects. So that's what we're focusing on these videos, always and forever moving forward. It's always going to be top prospects. So before we jump into the video, if you guys like this video, want me to keep doing minor league recaps. I've been getting some really good feedback in the comments below. Please let me know in the comments. Other than that, please give my video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Just let me know if you guys enjoy these, what I can do to make them better. Let me know in the comments below. Let's go. Low A baseball, player number one. First player up today is going to be Trevor Hover. You know, he's one of my favorite prospects, and he continues to do well in low A baseball. He needs to get moved up to high A already. He's just been really consistent. This week is a perfect example of what he's been doing the entire season. Power hasn't really shown up since week one. He hasn't had a home run since week one. But last week, from the 16th to the 22nd, you know, he played six games. He hit 304. He had a 484 on base percentage, 1,000 OPS. Again, power hasn't been gone. He's been hitting extra base hits, three doubles and a triple out of his seven hits. Really not bad at all, but he walked eight times. So really showing the plate discipline and just proving that he doesn't belong in low A. Definitely needs to go to a high A as soon as possible. Second player in low A, Marco Luciano. Honestly, one of my top five favorite prospects right now. He started off really slow, but he picked it up in week three. He's done really well. Played five games, hit two home runs. He hit 300 at the 364 on base percentage, 700 slugging, 1,000 OPS. He walked one time on top of that. He had five RBIs. Check out this home run. It literally looks like a single up the middle. Like, if that's not freaky power, I don't know what is. That didn't even look like he hit it hard. Like, a double at most, right? But now, carries out the center field over 400 feet. He's got special power. He really does. He's continuing to improve, it looks like, which is great. Showing more success. Again, solid week for Marco Luciano. The next guy we're talking about, honestly, might be one of the biggest surprises in low A so far this season. Gunnar Henderson has been absolutely killing it. And this week was just another showing of it. He hit 333 with a 440 on base percentage, 667 slugging, 1100 OPS. He hit two home runs on top of that, and he had nine RBIs in five games. He walked four times too. Gunnar Henderson showing us that this dude can play. He was a second round draft pick back in 2019 for the Orioles. Kind of flew under the radar in my opinion, obviously because Adley was drafted in the first round, but this guy's, he's playing really well right now. He's one of the best players in low A. And check out this oppo taco. No doubt, opposite field power, super impressive out of a lefty hitter. Gunnar Harrison looks great. And the last player we're going to talk about for low A is Noel V. Marte. Probably butchered his name. Pretty sure it's Noel V, though. Pretty straightforward, I think. Player of the week for me in low A, top prospect for the Mariners. He absolutely killed it this week. Other than Julio Rodriguez, I think Marte's the next guy up since Kelnick got brought up as far as height prospects and he can swing it he's got really quick hands i have a home run i'm going to show you guys this week he hit 350 with a 458 on base percentage 700 slugging and an 1150 ops absolutely killed it he hit two home runs on top of that eight rbis in five games walk four times as well so really great week check out this home run showing he's got a little bit of pop this year Terrible footage, I know, but you could just tell it was a no-doubter off the bat. He knew it. The outfielders knew it. They didn't even budge, like, turned around and watched it. Noelve Marte, I would say his power has always been his biggest question mark up until this year, and he's proven that he can hit for power. Like, I don't, I don't have any doubts in his ability to hit, and now that he's showing power, very intriguing prospect. That's going to round out low A. 
Player number one in high A is Brett Beatty, New York Mets. He was their first round pick back in 2019, 12th overall pick. He just continues to impress me. Every time I look at the box score, it seems like he has multi-hit games going. This past week was a perfect example. He hit 429 with a 400 on base percentage. I'm not sure how that's physically possible. 885 OPS. I'm not sure how you can have a higher batting average and on-base percentage baseball references. I guess if you stretch a single into a double and get thrown out, that is a hit, but you don't get on base, right? I guess that'd be the only way. Let me know in the, in the comments if you guys know. Nonetheless, absolutely killing it. He had nine hits in five games. He had a double on top of that. Eight RBIs. Only struck out three times in 22 plate appearances. Just really good stuff out of Brett Beatty. He's really showing that he can hit at the pro level. He's going to be in double A soon enough. He's he's killing it. I just really like his swing a lot. Check out this video. Just really quick hands. Just really quick hands. Not a lot of movement. I really like his swing. That is a very impressive swing. I like it a lot. He's doing really great. Can't wait to see what he keeps doing for the rest of the season. Brett Beatty's a beast. We only have two players in high A that we're going to talk about today. Just not a lot of huge performances in high A. Obviously, I might have missed a couple, but these are the top prospects that I noticed over the week. Spencer Torkelson finally came to his own this week, played really well. He went one for 27 in spring training. He was starting off really slow in the minor leagues. People started throwing out the bust word. This week, Spencer Torkelson hit 318 with a 429 on base percentage, 500 slugging, and a 929 OPS. Did really well. He finally hit his first home run. It was a 419-foot blast over the hitter's eye. Just absolutely crushed it. He only struck out three times this week, which I think is a great sign. And on top of seven hits in six games, he had a double. So really respectable week for Spencer Torkelson, showing that he can indeed hit in professional baseball. He did have a hamstring injury, though. He, so he's out currently. They said he shouldn't miss too much time. It's more of preventative, just hamstring tightness. But he has been out the past couple of days. All right, check out Spencer Torkelson's home run, and then we'll move on. Just an absolute bomb. Love to see it. Really good to see him do well. You know, you never want to see a first overall pick struggle too much just because not a good luck. But Spencer Torkelson, he looked great last week. Let's talk double-A baseball. First player in double-A we're going to talk about today, Peyton Burdick. He's one of my long-shot prospects. I just really like Peyton Burdick. I think he's really great at the plate. You know, he had a solid week. On paper, doesn't look great, but he did win double-A South Player of the Week with this performance. He hit 240 with a 269 on base percentage, 680 slugging, 950 OPS. He hit three home runs. So, showing that he has power. I don't think power was ever in question. At least for me, it wasn't. But he did win Player of the Week. Kind of just shows that you know, that double-A South is struggling a little bit, but hey, three home runs in a week, can't be mad at that. Six hits in six games, five of them for extra base hits. He only walked once, which I'm not crazy about, struck out eight times, but hey, people love the home run, and here's one of them. Second player we're going to talk about, Austin Martin. You know, first round draft pick, fifth overall this year in the 2020 draft. A lot of people thought he was going to go first overall. Kind of fell down to fifth, which a lot of people thought was a steal. He showed that he could hit this week. This week, Austin Martin hit 364 with a 429 on base percentage, 883 OPS. You know, hasn't really shown any power, but hey, four hits in three games. He walked twice on top of that. He did hit a double. Solid week for Austin Martin. Next double-A prospect, Riley Green, one of my favorite offensive prospects in all of the minor leagues. I just think he's special. I really do. I think he has it all. First rounder in 2019. He was the fifth overall pick to the Tigers. I think him and Torkelson are going to be just insane together once they finally get up to the pros at the same time. Riley Green, he started off slow, and then in week three, he said, hold on, I'm still here, everybody. Riley Green hit 375 with a 474 on base percentage, 750 slugging percentage, and a 1,200 OPS. He hit two home runs in four games. He had six hits. And on top of that, three walks. So really impressive week from Riley Green. Both of his home runs were in the opposite field, and here's one of them. Just a no doubter to the opposite field. Outfielders didn't even budge. Just shows how special Riley Green can be. Really great week. And then my top player of the week in double A, Nolan Gorman. Really great to see. He was 
a first rounder in 2018, 19th overall pick. He's from Arizona, so he's an Arizona boy. So I've been following him for a while. He started off slow. Like it seems like everyone started off slow in the minor leagues this year. A few guys have been doing great, but Noah Gorman started off terrible. Really slow. Week three, turn it around. Player of the week for me. 478 batting average, 478 on base percentage. So there was no walks, which is a little unfortunate. But he did have a 700 slugging percentage and 1174 OPS. He hit a home run on top of that, which I'll show you guys, which was a walk-off home run. Three RBIs, two doubles, just 11 hits in five games. Can't complain about that at all. I mean, there's not much to say when you almost hit 500. Check out this home run. It was a walk-off. Love to see it. Nolan Gorman's raking. Nolan Gorman, ice in his veins. Love to see it. He's my player of the week for double A. Riley Green did fantastic, but when you hit close to 500, I got to give it to him. He did great. All right, let's round this thing out with triple A. We still have a few guys up there absolutely destroying it, trying to get brought up. All right, only two players this week in triple A, but they did fantastic. First one being Jaron Durant. Boston Red Sox, this dude continues to impress. He's a seventh rounder from 2018, which I love to see. Love seeing those underdogs just succeed. And Jaron Duran is a perfect example. This week, Jaron Duran hit 333 with a 407 on base percentage, almost an 800 slugging percentage, and a 1200 OPS. He hit three home runs, two doubles, eight hits in six games, five of them going for extra base hits, five RBIs, three walks on top of that. Just a really good week. This dude's been showing he has light tower power. Check out this home run. Jaron Duran's hit it out of the stadium multiple times now. This dude continues to impress. He's just doing so well. The Red Sox need to bring him up. They just do. He's hot. He's playing well. There's no reason to keep a 24-year-old in AAA when he's playing good. Red Sox, bring up this guy. And the last guy we're going to talk about in today's video, probably the best player in AAA so far, Vidal Brujan. This dude is so impressive. This guy is Wander Franco's duplicate. He's a switch hitter, pretty much the same size. They both play up the middle. Like, I cannot wait to see these guys get brought up together. I hope they get brought up together. Brujan is literally putting Franco in the shadows right now. Brujan last week, he hit 304 with a 333 on base percentage, 565 Slugging percentage, 900 OPS. He had two home runs on top of that. This guy's special. Check out this home run. Just super impressive stuff again this week. So much fun. Lots of top performers. Again, this is from last week. I'm just trying to stay consistent. Again, I was on my honeymoon and I got married last week. So this is the best I came up with. Might have forgot a few people. I do apologize for that. Next week will be on point. I promise you that. If I did forget anyone, though, as always, put them down in the comments below. Drop their stat lines so both I and whoever's watching this video can see as well on maybe someone we missed in this video. But a lot of top performers this week. Love seeing it. A bunch of guys I really like as prospects were in this video today. So really good to see those guys playing well. But yeah, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. As always, if you guys like these recaps, want me to keep doing them, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Helps me out a ton. Again, if I figure out anyone, put it down in the comments below. Let me know in the comments what I can do to improve these videos as well. Always looking for feedback. Thank you all for watching. As always, you guys have a great rest of your day. And if I don't see you until next week's recap, have a great rest of your week. See ya.